It's time we made a jet and I'm going to make this one a very very early example but a really good stylish shape often uh, referred to as being like a shark and um, I as usual the aesthetics count a lot for me this is a very very good looking plane looks like it means business uh, <coughs> it is the pardon me it is the Messerschmitt ME262A1A. If my memory serves me correctly, Blue Oyster Cult did a song, on it, possibly an album by that name. Don't know why. And, well, that was the instructions. Oh, look, there's parts as well. Especially for the markings and the colours. Well, not really, especially for the markings, actually. And you get two types. I think I'll do the one on the other side, ironically. Here we go with a nice little interior, not quite cockpit, I suppose it's some kind of cradle with the, um, with the seat in it. And then you pop a little lid on. And then that all fits very snugly into the fuselage. Although I didn't do a very good job there myself, did I? Here's a variety of other bits. There's one of the engines. You can see behind it the underwing and oh and um you can see inside it as well and anyway there was the underwing and a bit of the interior of the cockpit there's parts of an engine which you can see eventually all fits together nicely and there we are i put those two together properly now and you can see that they all slot in wonderfully but the interior there i've got a wonky floor haven't i I did sort that out in the end because a little man wouldn't fit in. You can see also that the undercarriage doors don't fit brilliantly. I could do something about it, but I'm trying to avoid fiddling with things and just seeing how everything goes naturally. And there you are with the interior of the cockpit, and there's the fuselage fitting on rather, well, I was going to say nicely, but it didn't go too well, did it? And you get the gist. Nice looking aircraft. I know I've said it before and I'm probably going to say it again. Look at all those transfers. Look at all those transfers, in fact. Um, there's a lot there. I will try and put them all on. But life's short and I've got things to do. Uh, I had a dream, a nightmare. Um, that I had bought a model and the sheet of transfers was just enormous, like A4, and there were millions of little ones on. That's my idea of a nightmare. Not monsters, give me monsters any day of the week. This kind of thing. Am I going to see them when they're all on? I suppose that's not the point. Well, here we go. Okay, I'm doing a fairly crummy shot here because I've got every single transfer on um, apart from the dash panel actually, I forgot to do that the control panel, whatever, in the cockpit uh, yes, anyway, I've got all of the other transfers on but at this point I've given it a very thin coat of varnish and a couple of transfers have come off in particular there should be nice little red rings or a red ring on either side of each engine and the red ones have all come off I've managed to rescue one but it's not very visible no, it's looking rough isn't it so here we are I suspect others are going to come off one or two wanted to come off while I was putting the thin coat of varnish on um, but that was alright I could rescue that but I don't know what's going on Red transfers do not stick. Yesterday we had fabulous weather. Oh look, yesterday's fabulous weather. Now, um, it was very sunny and I was a bit busy. Today we've got this. So uh, there's probably no point in... Oh, I'll do one shot of the aircraft out here, but... I think the rest I'll set something up. Here we are, 
Just a little look outside. The light really couldn't get much worse without being night time. Anyway, there it is. You get the gist. I think I'm going to take this indoors because this is. Oh, look, a little white transfer has gone. Got to get the paintbrush out on that then. I was going to show you how it's snowing, but meet Smudge, the friendly sheep who likes skinny pig crunch, along with a lot of friends of hers. Ain't she sweet? Come on, Smudgy! Here she comes. Better get her a bucket of guinea pig crunch then. Come on, Smudge! She's in the hospital field, because it's near the farm. This is where all the sick sheep come, and the farmer does a very good job of curing them, actually. And she's allowed guinea pig crunch, this one in particular, because she needs to put on a bit of weight, don't you, Smudgy? But look what happens. The advance of the other sheep. I haven't got enough crunch for all of them. Here they come. In the better weather we go in the field and get surrounded by them and have a lovely time. But because it's horrible I'm going in. So here we are sitting on the glass with a fake sky in the background. I nearly started getting into really complex systems for holding this up and creating a well lit sky and so on. And then I realised, come on, calm down, we're not supposed to be going to town. Perhaps I'm, my policy of not, not getting too complicated with the models is a response to the fact that I tend to overcomplicate anything and everything. So, uh, there's a thought. Anyway, here it is. Part of the process of not overcomplicating things is the camouflage, very often, has a very blotchy gradation from green on the top to grey at the lower parts and I've just let this fade using two sprays. Um, the reason being, first of all I think it's a really sleek marvellous aircraft so I wanted to keep it very plain and simple. The other reason is that I have done a good few blotchy versions of German camouflage and I just wanted to keep this very 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 basic and I have seen a few images whoops on the internet where the German colour scheme is nice and simple. This hasn't even got the camouflage patterns on the top and that's actually based on the instructions. Another reason, or here's an example of, this is a blotchy version. It's really nice, I really enjoy it. But I wanted to keep that one simple. Partly because I got this one. I did this one ages ago uh, when the computer was eating all the shots. And I actually got this in a sale at Model Zone. Before Model Zone declared they were running into trouble. I have to say though that uh, it was a massive sale with incredible discounts. And I did wonder if they'd got problems at that point. This one is a, I think it's by Dragon. Both models are incredibly good. Um, there's not a lot of hairs to split between them, I have to say. And I think, possibly, this dragon, whoa, this dragon one, had a few more parts, uh, but most of that was internal detail. So I'm not that worried. I do like interiors, I have to say. But I am trying to control myself. The Airfix one... Very, very good. Probably one of their best. Just about everything fitted together really nicely. Slight problem on the underside with one or two bits. But, really excellent model. Enjoyed making it very much. Uh, I have had models I haven't enjoyed making. Uh, and we'll see some of those as time goes by. But here we are, with two gorgeous aircraft, two very fine models and both very enjoyable 
model making experiences. I didn't do that very well, did I? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, despite my failings and my decisions and choices, and uh, go out and get one. <laughs>